Hi, Margie. Hey, Kathy. I'm glad we have this opportunity to talk about informed consent and to give a little more detail mm -hmm. about the process. Yeah. So am I, because I know that it gets overwhelming when you see all the pieces as a student and you're thinking about all the parts you need to remember. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad we can kind of break it down and go through it all. Right. So the first place that we usually need to start is scope of practice. Yeah. And um, looking at the agency facility. So many times it's important for the client that we define what it is this agency does, mm -hmm. what population it serves, and what actual services it provides to the client. Clients may not be aware of the range of services that mm -hmm. are available or what actually the, the agency does. So it's important yeah. that we provide that context for a client. And also your own scope of practice. So the agency right. scope of practice and your own personal scope of practice, kind That's of being right. able to say, this is the kind of work we do and this is the kind of work I do. Exactly. And I think that also helps in the building rapport section too, that you know mm -hmm. the client understands you have defined what you can do with them. Yeah. Um, and so they have a better idea of that as yeah. well. Yeah, so everybody knows what to expect to some right. extent. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yep. Next, I guess we would move into the actual agency and facility procedures. Mm -hmm. um, and there we can start talking about Where's parking? Where's the restroom? Where are the water fountains? Mm -hmm. All yeah. of those kinds of things. So that, again, clients feel kind of um, oriented to the agency yes. and are aware of where everything is. That gives them a little bit of calm and a little bit of reassurance. Yeah. So I think it's really good for them to know the physical space. I think it's yes. also really important for them to have a sense of the procedures about how things work at the agency. So that if there is a billing department that they need to talk to, right. that that's who you talk to about any kind of financial concerns, that if um, you have a set, certain way of working the hours that you do, so it's right. a 50 minute hour here, that they know that that's how the agency does things that usually we see people once a week or twice a month or however that works. So they have a sense of those policies that the agency right. has as well. And that's so important up front. Yeah. So next would be confidentiality, which is a really important concept for clients. Um, many times, I think, as practitioners, we talk about things that are private and confidential for, mm -hmm. for clients, and to give them the assurance that everything we talk about here in session together stays between us. Mm -hmm. But there are some exceptions. So I think that it's important for them to know so that they can make good decisions. Right. It's really important for them to know what won't stay private between the two of us. Right. So I think it's things like, obviously, the safety concerns. Right. So And spelling it out. So mm -hmm. saying, if you're suicidal, or if there's threats of harm to others, or if you're, there's some child abuse or elder abuse going on, those are things right. that I can't keep confidential. Right. Those are things I have to let somebody else know so that right. everybody stays safe. Right. And I think it's really important not to be afraid of saying those words, because I think that it, it's, it's helpful to let people know what those exceptions are. Right. And that's a really important point that it's okay to say those things and use those terms. Yeah. Um, that we're talking about keeping clients safe or their family members safe, mm -hmm. whoever might Everybody. be in jeopardy. Yeah. Right. And then also that you're going to be talking with a supervisor right. to make sure they're getting the best services. Right. And that it's not just because you're a student, but all social workers should be consulting with supervisors so that they can make sure the clients are getting the best services exactly. and getting their needs met. Exactly. So. No matter what level of professional you are as a social worker, how many years you've had, yes. you need to be consulting with a supervisor. Yeah. And then I think the other pieces are if there's a court order or a subpoena, those are also right. times where you may not have that same kind of privacy about the records they may have to go mm -hmm. to court. Or if the client wants you to be talking with someone else right. about the services, so you're coordinating care for them. So if they're seeing a physician, maybe they want to make sure that care is coordinated and you're talking with the physician right. and the physician's talking with you. So, then they can simply sign a release of information, right? And that allows us to openly speak, you know, about the issues that they've agreed are covered by that yes. release form. And reassuring people 
I know a lot of times people have questions about like, sure. are you going to talk with my family members? Right. Um, and so that's something where, you know, you want to be able to reassure them. If you sign a release, then yes, but yes. otherwise no. And I think then the other piece is thinking about working with adolescents or children. Oh, right. And confidentiality. It's making right. sure that you kind of are clear that the parent ha- has right the right to see the records mm-hmm. um, so that everybody's clear about that part as well. Right. Yeah, that's a really important point, which takes us right into client rights, which is the next area of informed consent. We always want our clients to know they have the right to have access to their records, to Mm -hmm. know what it is we're keeping documents about and Mm -hmm. notes about, um, and that they are part of our working Mm -hmm. relationship. We are not doing things for them or to them. We're doing things with them. Right. So that they are always in that position of agreeing to what they're working on, um, knowing what the options are as far as what, what kind of treatment they're doing um, and being able Mm -hmm. to say, I don't want to continue doing this or withdrawing consent if they decide that that's not helpful for them. They always have that choice. And it's really important that we reinforce that to clients. Many times informed consent is done first at the first Mm -hmm. session, but it may be revisited later as issues develop um, to let clients know they always have that choice and they always have the ability to make a different decision. Yeah, I think partly because a lot of times in that first session, they may not hear everything of the course. same way because there's so much going on and it's so new for them. So I mm-hmm. think it's really good when you revisit it if there's some right. concern at some point. Right, right, exactly. And I think then the other thing about clients' rights is also the idea that um, getting into the idea of referrals as well. Yes. So if the work that you're doing with them is not maybe everything that needs to be done or if it's not meeting all of their needs that you'll refer them for other services and you'll facilitate that happening for Mm -hmm. them. Right. And again, with them, part of the process, Mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah. Which is kind of the final section of um, informed consent, which is service and referrals. So as we've talked, clients have the right to be able to make some choices about what type of service they're going to receive. Part of that is us letting them know what exists, Mm -hmm. but it also may be helping them choose things outside of our agency, Um, letting them know that there may be another place that could best meet their needs or better meet their needs. So I think it's really important. It's a lot of information to get across, and that's part of why I think it's usually good if you've got some handout that you give the person you're working with so that they actually can refer to it and think if they have questions. Sure. But you want to make sure you go through it all with them as well. Right. Exactly. Next, I think we'll do a demonstration of what it would look like in actually doing it. That'd be great.